Titans, 118 and 8. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 118, verse 8, and it says, Better it is to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in man. I mean, it's a beautiful precept, man. I'm going to read that again. Psalms 118 and 8. It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in man. Verse 9 has got a bit more meat. It says, It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in princes. So what else have I got here? Yeah, Romans 10 and 17 is a beautiful precept on the importance of sharing testimonies. This is book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the most high. Let me read that again. Romans 10 and 17. So then faith, now this is the principal thing, these testimonies are supposed to increase your faith, you know. But fa so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Most High, you know. So the point is, by hearing the words of the Most High, by hearing these testimonies, it's supposed to increase your faith. That's the whole point of it, you know. So let's get another precept, Acts Yeah, Acts 14 and 3 is a beautiful one. It's the book of Acts chapter 14 and verse 3. No, that's not right. No, it is right. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace. And granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Read that again. Acts 14 and 3. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord. Which is what we do when we give these testimonies. Which gave testimony unto the word of his grace. You see the most High showed me grace and mercy by delivering me from this financial situation I was in. Financial quagmire. And granted signs. And wonders to be done by their hands. So beautiful. Um, Ephesians 2 and 8. Hopefully people are getting edified by this Lord willing. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. For by grace you are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of the most high. Not of works, lest any man should boast. See, for example, I can't boast and say, hey, yeah, man, I was so suave and swish at doing business that I was able to negotiate these sales and I made made, made good profit on them. No, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was the Most High to, who delivered me because the Most High put it in the minds of these. It was just two people who I made loads of sales from. You know, I sold like, let me see, six plus 11 is, six and 11 is 17. No, 18. I sold 18 items to just two people and made loads of money from just two people. So the most I put it in the minds of two people to come to my aid financially and, and pay for these products and deliver me from this thing. That shows the power of the most time, man. Most people don't buy 11 items in one go or six items in one go. Here, here's the precept on that, actually. This is Job 33 and 15. Oh shit, it's lucky. There's another part to this testimony, man, I forgot to mention. So before I get that, Job 33 and 15, it's lucky, bear with me. 
even while I was in this financial quagmire where all these people were demanding money from me, I had the pre-order, which was only £400. DHL, £260. That's like £600-something, pounds, man. Then this guy who wanted his refund on his uh, figure that didn't arrive, £52. On top of that, check this. So I was checking my account on uh, Sunday. Just gone Sunday, yeah? And I noticed that... Um, no, it's Monday morning. This is before I got these sales. Monday morning, I was checking my bank account. And I thought, hang on a minute, something don't look right, man. I noticed that on my account statement, there were some charges that I hadn't spent. For example, I was at camp on Saturday. But on Saturday, it says that I'd been in KFC in some part of London where I don't even live. And, you know, spent money at KFC. I was like, I didn't buy KFC on Saturday. I was at camp. Saturday, I was at camp. Didn't buy no KFC. And I certainly wasn't in that part of London. That looks odd. Then I noticed someone had also made a, a charge for Travel Lodge Hotel. And I was like, I don't use hotels generally, especially not in London. Um, so someone had made a charge to Travel Lodge. I thought, hang on a minute. Someone's obviously stolen my account details. So on top of all of this stuff, someone had been doing fraud on my account. Now, the good thing is, is that um, there's hardly any money in my account at the time anyway. But the fact of the matter is that while all these people were demanding money from me, on top of that, someone had got somehow got my card details and was running around London. And also they tried to shop a pretty little thing. Now, I'm guessing it might have been a woman because I'm not going to shop a pretty little wo woman, pretty little thing, because I don't have a woman at the moment. Um, so I'm not going to be going to buy stuff at this, this female clothes shop. So I'm suspecting that maybe it was a woman who was doing this. So I contacted the bank, I phoned them up and I said, hey, um, I'm noticing some charges on my account, which I haven't spent. And I reported it to them, to their fraud team. And they said to me, oh, um, the woman on the phone was really, really helpful. She goes to me, um, okay, it seems like someone has been trying to do these charges on your account. There's more than what's shown on the statement. And if it's not you, we're going to have to write it off as fraud. And any charges that you have incurred that are fraudulent, we will refund it to your account after the charges have gone through. So basically, this was another um, bit, of, bit of weight, bit of fire that the Most High was putting on my back. Because even while all this stuff was going on, someone was trying to steal from me. So maybe I should pray curses on this person, but um, I haven't done it yet, but maybe I will. Um... Thankfully, I, I was able to spot it. But the whole point is, is that even amidst all this other hell, someone was trying to steal from me, from my account. So thankfully, I was able to get that situation resolved too. And again, it's an example of the Most High delivering me from affliction because, you know, um, this is the trial of a man, you know. It says, acceptable men shall be tried in the furnace of adversity. This is just one a layer of adversity that the most eyes put on me to try me in this particular uh point in my walk in this faith and um to be honest this was a light thing compared to shit i've dealt with in the past man but you know i'm not gonna say that in case the most i throws a real curveball at me and smashes my whole thing so i'm not saying that out of pride i'm just saying that you know the most high has been the way I feel like, I feel like a dog on a leash. And it's funny because, um, you know, my Hebrew name is Caleb, Caleb, which means dog. And the way I feel in this walk is that the Most High's got me on a leash, man. And he's like, you know, I'm going to take you through this now. I'm going to take you through that now. And I'm faithful to my master, you know, because he's all I've got. He's all I've got. I mean, even with all, you know, okay, I've got a nice set of possessions, earthly possessions here. This ain't nothing to the grace. This, you know that Sinead O'Connor song, Nothing Compares? That's how I feel about the Most High. You know, nothing compares, you how are you, how shy. Nothing compares to the grace and the love and the comfort that they've shown me through their word, the word and the testimony and the gospel. I'd give it all up in a second for, for them because that's my first love.
you know, a lot of people love women in the world and they'll get down on one knee for a woman, but ain't no woman been there and had my back the way Yahweh or Yahweh Shai has. So, if it comes between choosing between a woman and a Most High, the Most High always wins. Hence why I'm single. Um, but you know, we're supposed to be solitary as soldiers in this walk, so. I know I'll get it all back. Everything that I've lost for the sake of the gospel, we're going to get back and tenfold uh, in the kingdom. And I have faith in that. So let me continue with the precepts. I was going to get a, one in Job, I think. Yeah, man. Job 33 and 15. And this is why we pray. You know, when we pray, you know, Abanawa, Shabbat Shemayim, Kodash Haya Shankai Yahawa, Alakwath Ka Thaba Ara Tazaka, Haya Shankai Yahawa. Am I saying it what? Salakia, now I'm on camera. <laughs> I've got a bit flustered, you know. Abanawa, Shabbat Shemayim, Kodash Haya Shankai, Alakwath Ka Thaba Ara Tazaka, Haya Isha Bara Tazakawa, Haya Bashamayam. Anyway, it's like I'm, I'm going in Hebrew. The point is, when we pray to the Most High, Matthew 6, we're supposed to pray for our daily bread. And that's essentially all, I, all I'm really praying for, you know. The faith to stay in the faith, and for enough just to get by. And that's all you really need, man. Clothes on your back, roof over your head, and just enough. You know, when you start getting into excesses, that's when problems come, because that's when the demons come. And that's when you start to get, like, attached to things, man. And you don't want to be attached to things on this side. You don't want to be attached to things on this side. Job 33 and 15. Now, this is what the Most High did to those people who came to buy from me and help deliver me from this situation through the financial aid they gave me through these sales. Job 33 and 15. In a dream... In the vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose, and hide pride from man. So basically, every night when you go to sleep, the Most High puts his words in your mind, and he seals the instructions in your head for what you're going to do the next day. And that happens to everybody. No matter what nation you're from, even these Edomites, even these unfaithful, unbelieving Edomites, they are in the palm of the Most Hand. He's doing their will just on the left-hand side. So while they might think that they're atheists and they don't believe in God and they've got free will and all this other shit, they ain't got free will because there's no such thing as free will. Man's goings are of the Lord. So how, then, how can a man then understand his own way? Even my goings, you know, as I said, the Most I put me through this situation so he could put it to me and say, hey, you know what? Are you going to do a testimony video on this or are you going to hide your talent? So, here I am doing the testimony video, hopefully fulfilling the will and the instruction that was given to me by the Most High to do this. So, let's keep going. Have I got any more? Yep. Proverbs 16 and 1. Book of Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 1. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from Yahweh. Let me read that again. Proverbs 16 and 1. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from Yahweh. I rest my case. Proverbs 16 and 9. A man's heart deviseth his way, but Yahweh directeth his steps. Read it again. Double. We've got to go two times on these ones because these are some hard scriptures, man. Proverbs 16 and 9. A man's heart deviseth his way, but Yahweh directeth his steps. What else have I got? Jeremiah 10 and 23. Precept upon precept, line upon line, hair a little, there a little. Love doing this, man. So it says, um, 
Jeremiah 10 and 23. O Yahweh, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. You know, read it again. Jeremiah 10 and 23. O Yahweh, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Beautiful precepts. Psalms 139 verses 1 and 2. Book of Psalms 139 verses 1, ver 1 and 2. It says, um, To the chief musician, a psalm of David. O Yahweh, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. You know, the scriptures say that even the hairs on your head are numbered. You know, so the most high the most high knows every single thing that you're going through. And even more so, Yahushai knows exactly what you're going through because Yahushai working as the mediator. He understands what you're going through, man. Because he came down in the flesh and dwelt as a man in the flesh. So all the things that we're going through, all the pain and all the stresses and all the worries. He's been there, man. You know, the scriptures, the, 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 the testimony gives an account of him having a grey hair, a head of grey hair at 32 years old. Why are you going to have grey hair at 32 years old? That means he was under hella stress. You know, the, the amount of pressure that Yahweh Shai went through in his life and then ultimately to go on the cross for our sakes, man. What we're going through is nothing but a light affliction in comparison. So... We've always got to keep it in perspective, man. And that's something that Edomites simply can't do. As I said, when, e when Esau gets into financial trouble, that's when Esau will pull out a gun, shoot his wife, shoot his baby children, and then shoot the dog as well and shoot himself. Or you find Esau hangs himself or throws himself out of a flipping 10th story window because his business was failing. What kind of bullshit, man? Esau ain't got it like that, man. Esau ain't got the faith like like we should have as Israelites, you know, because the faith was given unto us because salvation is of is of the Jews, you know. Jew meaning uh, the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin and Levi, collectively were called the Jews, but, you know, salvation is for the nation of Israel because the tribe of Judah is just one of 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, you know. But yeah, commonly the, the southern kingdom is Judah, Benjamin and Levi is referred to as the Jews, and the northern kingdom, you know, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Simeon. Um, uh, it's lucky I'm forgetting someone, Issachar. Um, those are known as the northern kingdom, which is known as, you know, Israel and Judah. Israel and the Jews, luckier. Northern kingdom and southern kingdom. But, you know, not to get too dis sidetracked, but, you know, Ezekiel 37 talks about how Judah will not vex Ephraim anymore. And the, the two sticks will come together and become... One stick. That's the Ezekiel 37 prophecy. Anyway, don't want to get sidetracked. Let's stay on the point. It's lucky this has been a bit of a long lesson, but, you know, the spirit is what it is. Proverbs 20 and Man's goings are of Yahweh. How can a man then understand his own way? Read it again. Proverbs 20 and 24. Man's goings are of Yahweh. How can a man then understand his own way? Proverbs 21 and 1. The king's heart is on in the hand of Yahweh. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. So that's the king's heart. 
you know. So the highest people, like the, even the elites of Esau Edom, you know, you Rothschilds, you know, you elite banking families, which would be considered the kings of this current uh, Babylon, Babylon the Great Empire. You're the kings of Israel, but you know what? Even their hearts, meaning their minds, which is the Hebrew word lab, if I'm not mistaken, their, their minds are in the hand of Yahweh to turn it whithersoever he will. Because the, the Most High controls both sides, good and evil, left and right. So let me read that again. The king's heart, meaning the king's mind, is in the hand of Yahweh, as the rivers of water he turneth it whithersoever he will. Now what you've got to remember is, imagine looking at the ocean, man. If you've ever been on a boat or, um, I mean, you could be at the beach and you're seeing the, 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 the sea coming in on the shore. But when you get into those deep waters and it's all choppy and shit, man, you look at that stuff. And it, me, I, my, my worst fear is of deep, dark water. Water. I, 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 that's, that's my biggest fear. I can swim. Fine. But I just don't like being in deep, dark water. And um, because when you're in that, it's very unstable, man. And it kind of makes you realize that your place is your place. Um, you know, you should be in your place, <laughs> like the Coldplay song. Um, you know, your place is really on terra firma, dry ground. And when you're in them waters, you're kind of in uncharted territories, man. So when the scripture says the, the heart of the king, meaning the king's mind, the most I can turn it like water. And that, that water is never, unless it's in a cup. It's going to be still, but you know what I mean? When you're looking at the ocean, that stuff's choppy. You know, the most I controls that, man. So that's interesting precept. Only a few more, Lord willing. Yeah, just two more precepts and then I'll close out. This is Proverbs 16 and 7. Now this is a this is a beautiful one because in the conclusion of the situation, um, the person but well, okay they tried to do fraud on my account and someone was stealing money the little money that I did have in my account. The person on the phone was very helpful to me, and they believed my case and they put it down as fraud and stuff. You know it could have been a different situation where I might have had to do all kinds of shit like actually go up to the bank in person and prove that I hadn't spent these funds at these locations on these specific dates and times i've had to do that in the past years ago but i was able to solve it quickly you know furthermore the person who wanted the refund for the item they didn't receive i was able to get a little bit of money just so i could pay that guy back and i've got a favorable report from that favorable report from that guy maybe he'll buy from me again in the future likewise the, the people who gave me the majority of the sales i had favorable report with these people Here's a precept. Proverbs 16 and 7. When a man's ways please Yahweh, he maketh even his enemies be at peace with him. And read that again. Proverbs 16 and 7. When a man's ways please Yahweh, he maketh even his enemies be at peace with him. Now, this isn't to say that, oh yeah, I'm so cool, you know, I'm so cool, you know, the Most High loves me so much that he made my enemies be at peace with me. No, no, no. I'm just saying it with all humility in the sense that Barakathi Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, the water for delivering me from these situations and, and counting me worthy to be even considered for this scripture. Proverbs 16 and 7. When a man's ways please Yahweh, he maketh even his enemies be at peace with him. One last precept. No, it's lucky that's the last precept. So yeah, man, Lord willing, that was hopefully an edifying testimony story. And Lord willing, I'll do more of these. I've kind of enjoyed doing this. It's a different way, different format to what I usually do. Usually I just do, you know, news article video on it or event video on it but yeah man sharing testimonies is kind of you know when you talk about stuff it helps you to reflect upon it and it's interesting because I'm a very sort of I don't, I don't know if I, I'm not really introvert but it's just I'm a very deep thinker so I think a lot of stuff a lot of time and I don't even bother to articulate it because people in the world can't understand 
the type of spiritual high level spiritual stuff so therefore i think you know what's the point in even talking so it's kind of nice to actually be able to do a video and lord willing it'll be edifying to the members of the hopeful elect who may be watching this so yeah i'm going to close out here giving all praise and all glory unto yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem achachwadash double honors to the elders and apostles of great northstone that rule well and a sincere shalom arm to all you are that be pushing this word around the globe in faith and in truth with sincerity yeah man so yeah i'm gonna close out here kwam yashawala wa ababa bo shalom